are you aware today is the anniversary of your draft day? It is the 18th, isn't it? Yep. Yep. I didn't even think about it. We didn't know <laughs> either, and you mentioned uh, before the show. Yep. I didn't even think. Yeah, April 18th, Saturday in New York City. Yep. You know, we were at uh, what Madison Square Garden, I believe, at the time. I or Radio City so. Music Hall. I don't. I, I don't. It may have been Bobby, in right? Felt Forum. Felt Forum. You can look that one up. I don't no, know if it was, it was at Radio MSG. City. Yeah, it was yeah. MSG. Yeah. The theater, yeah. 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 At the theater in MSG. Yeah, that's when they renamed And I'm sure it was noon Eastern was. as well. So right about now, you might have been literally holding up a jersey with Paul Tagliabue. It would have been because they took the full 15 minutes for Peyton and pretty much the full 15 minutes for me. So right about now, yeah. 26 wow. years ago? Yep, today. 26 yeah. years ago today. Dude. <laughs> almost late. Almost late because my brother and my cousin thought it was a good idea before the bus in the morning to go run through Times Square and try to get themselves fake IDs. I remember <laughs> I remember sitting there and I just can feel like uh, Olivia and Archie Manning like staring daggers into the back of my head like, who does this guy think he is, you know? Because you kept them late too? Well, yeah, they're on the bus with us and oh. we're just like, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry. And he stumbles up onto the thing and they're like, yeah, and I'm just, oh, we read Did next they, from Montana. And then, <laughs> and that's when Archie Manning found out the reason why the bus was late? I don't think he found out until years later when I told him about it. But, <laughs> but I think they were just much like, that leaf kid just doing whatever he wants to do. No, they were, they were amazing. They were been amazing to my family. When oh, I was this. when I was in prison and going through all the stuff, Olivia and Archie reached out to my parents. Are you and, serious? Oh, so we've known each other now for 26 years. There's a great picture. I'll have to get it to you sometime from the Heisman Trophy night. Yeah. And it's uh, Cooper, my brother, and Eli, all three of them. Yeah. In the outfits that our pa our parents put them in. And the <laughs> Peyton and I have this like we're gonna put it to the side. One night on the Manning cast, we're just gonna embarrass. Brady Leaf, Cooper Manning, and and Eli Manning because of the outfits, like like you know striped shirts with with vertical running ties, you know floppy moppy hair. Oh my! It's word. a good one, like a nine year old, thirteen year old, and like a I don't know twenty three year old Cooper oh, Manning. So yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So fifteen minutes. They did you think in that fifteen minutes time that maybe they were still no. hashing it Lee out? Lee Steinberg or? was very adamant about what the fifteen minutes of free advertising was. Your agent, yeah. Uh -huh. At the time, he said, "Don't it's they'll take the full fifteen minutes uh -huh. because that's they're gonna, just going to talk about the San Diego Chargers for fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. It's free airway." No, when is the fifteen minutes that they that the Colts took to put? No, he he name told in. me. He told me what it. It was a little iffy just because Jim Mercer didn't come in until the morning of the, the um, if you recall, when I had him on the show, which you yes. suggested, which was a great idea because it was a great interview. Yeah. He says, like, I didn't fly until the morning of because, like, this guy I trusted the most, like he told me, he said, don't, don't pass on that Leaf kid. And that was Hunter S. Thompson. No, it wasn't Hunter S. It was actually, <laughs> if he would have hired Hunter S., we would have known what that looked like. But it was another one of the guys he really trusted, he said. Yeah for years in the football business and he went against what the what the guy said. I said, well, smart thinking, Jim. That was good. Ha. Huh. So uh you're sitting there and the, your phone it, it, there's no phones. No. So it was like a an actual like princess phone sitting right next to you. There was, was I don't I don't remember even answering a phone. I just remember Paul Tagliabue announcing the name and me standing up and like the you know, hug the agent, hug the mom and dad. I was yes. down in the very bottom in the green room, so I had to come all the way back up and across. We had like 19, 20 family members all out there with the styrofoam lightning bolts. Just, I mean, it was a, an amazing day. And then what followed, right, of course, was you go through just a quick radio row of bouncing off. And what's funny about this, and, you know, he's become such a dear friend of mine and, and a mentor and boss and Howie Denneroff. Sure. Of Westwood uh, One. Howie, like, was one of the first people to interview me. He told me the story. He's got a picture of us, uh, me, 21 years old. Yes. And Howie Denneroff uh, working with, uh, uh, I, I'm assuming he was with Westwood one at the time. He's been with him for, you know, Ever. 87 years. Yes. And so, um, <laughs> you know, he's got this picture of it. And now, you know, we work together and he's, you know, he's just uh, such a sweetheart. So the started there. Then it's whisked off with Alex Spanos, Dean Spanos, uh, my father, Lee Steinberg on their private plane. We stopped down at Wake Forest to pick up their son, who is now the president of the, the team. The, the team. Oh, my and we head west. And uh, um, we stop in Las Vegas. They have a home in Las Vegas. We spent the night in Vegas with my all my uncles. All my friends came down from Montana. Uh, we had a, 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 an amazing time. Got up first thing in the morning, 
flew into San Diego, did the press conference, and away we went. It, it's fascinating, Ryan, uh, that you stopped in Vegas. I had not heard that because oh. I heard the story that you famously told the Colts the first thing you were going to do if they drafted you first overall is go with your buddies to Vegas. Yeah, yeah. That was a Bill Poley and Bruce Arians uh, uh, nonsense tale. I kind of just sat on for <laughs> forever. I just, I didn't have the, I don't know if I had the pride or if I, I maybe I didn't have the, the goodwill that anybody would take my story seriously because I was such a fraud and liar for so long, you know, in terms of pushing back against it just yeah, after that story came kinda, out years later. Yeah. I just ate it for, for years and years. And no, it, it was, it was constant for the last 20 years, almost from those guys. And I right. just, and I just never, and this year I finally was just like, okay, Hey, you know, I, the, the, I wouldn't have done that. You know, I wasn't going to go party with my friends in Vegas. Uh, you know, if I'm going to Indianapolis, you know, Vegas isn't on the way to Indianapolis. <laughs> for one thing. Not from Madison Square Garden. And when I mentioned it to uh, Dean in the plane, I'm like, hey, do you mind if we stop in Vegas on the way? Mm -hmm. um, all my cousins and really good friends that couldn't come to New York want to meet me there and, and celebrate with me. That's when the question was asked. Mm. Mr. Spanos. And he could have easily said no. Sure. He said, we have a house there. Of course, Ryan. Let's do it. And you did it. And we did it. And Mr. Spanos was, now his father was an interesting subject. He pulls out a VHS about mid-flight of him doing like a tap dance routine with Bob Hope. And I'm just <laughs> looking at my dad going, like, where the hell are we? <laughs> We're on a private plane. <laughs> with a VCR. Yes, with a VCR, VCR to VH yeah. VHS. No DVDs yeah. or laser discs at the time. And so apropos of nothing, he's like, oh, I've got this VHS of me tapped oh, yeah, into stocked in Northern California, you know, real estate hey. magnet, like, you know, Bob Hope. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah. Tap dancing? We just, yeah. well, I, looked at my, I just looked at my, and then he starts yelling at Lee Steinberg about, don't, don't you screw around with me and hold, have him hold out, get this contract done. And so different times, man, yeah, it was, uh, contracts needed to get done. I yeah. mean, now totally different times. Rookie salary cap. Done. I know. Yeah. And then, if, oh my god! I think we held out for like three days. And I remember just cleaning my house going, get me in camp, get me in camp. And I was the highest paid player for about 48 hours, and Peyton got about 250 grand more. So I was the highest paid player in the NFL for about uh, 48 hours. There you I go. Thought. Fantastic. <laughs> Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.